Return of the Mount Hua Sect Chapter 191 Such a big figure has suddenly appeared. Great Sichuan Tang family. A cold voice came from the head of the family, the one who led Sichuan, which had a hundred years of history and played a part among the five great families. So, the head of the Sichuan Tang family, Tang Gunak, spoke in a low voice, devoid of emotions. You were defeated by Mount Hua and came back without doing anything. Yes, you lost to neither Mount Hua's divine dragon nor the righteous sword of Hua, which are famous these days. Instead, you were defeated by the second son of the Four Seas Merchants. Yes, Tang Gunak's eyes were ablaze with anger. Do you know what this means? I do. Tang Pei, who was next in line for the position of the family head, sat beside Tang Gunak and spoke. Your knees are quite stiff for someone in your position. Tang Zhan looked at Tang Pei once and then reaffixed his gaze back to the Lord. But as of not having any intention of letting this go easily, Tang Pei spoke again in a cold voice. You are a direct descendant of the main family, the Lord's own progeny by blood. But you return here so shamefully after being beaten by Zhou Do you know what will happen once the people of Sichuan hear about this? I know. Everyone will mock and demean us. There will be people who implicitly believe that the Sichuan Tang family has lost its prestige. That our family is insignificant now. Then, there will inevitably be people who rebel against the family and try to collude with the other factions. Tang Zhan bowed his head. One small thing can cause a lot of trouble. You aren't so idiotic as to be oblivious to this, are you? Of course not, Hyung. This is an official post. Yes, young lord. Tang Pei spoke coldly. How are you going to take responsibility for this? With one mistake, the reputation of the Sichuan Tang family could be destroyed. In a big way, it could shake the family's dominion. It's not something that can be solved by simply offering your life either. I will take any punishment. Then, when Tang Pei was ready to speak, Tang Gunak spoke. Tang Zhan. Yes, Lord. Tang Gunak looked at his son with cold eyes and slowly asked, Did you say you were prepared? Yes. Does that mean you know how great this mistake of yours is? I do. Then why does your face look so at peace? This was what Tang Gunak really wanted to know. The Tang Zhan that he knew was the physical embodiment of the pursuit of victory. None of his sons were more competitive or ambitious than Tang Zhan. Tang Zhan had endured the family's harsh training, the same training that caused his other siblings to cry or run away. He preserved without ever uttering a complaint through his strong determination. Considering that even Tang Gunak had escaped from home three times before he became an adult, Tang Zhan's desire was terrifying. For that reason, he was particularly loved by Tang Gunak among all his children. But that same child looked content even after suffering defeat. Tang Gunak thought that perhaps his reasoning would be more important than what happened at the merchant's chamber. Tang Zhang spoke, Because I found it. Found it. I found the way I need to progress, and I know the world is wide. Knowing that so many people are stronger than me, I now have the motivation to work harder. Why would I be afraid of punishment then? Tang Gunak frowned. There are many who are stronger than you. Are you referring to the second child of the Four Seas Merchant Chamber? It's clear that I lost my fight with him, but if we battle again, the outcome would be different. But not against the others. The Righteous Sword of Hua and Mount Hua's Divine Dragon. The Righteous Sword of Hua is definitely stronger than Jogul and Mount Hua's Divine Dragon. Tang Zhan, who was speaking, went silent. Tang Gunak didn't rush and waited for his son to process his thoughts and speak. I don't know. But the answer that came after a long silence was beyond his expectations. You don't know? Yes. I don't know whether he is weak or strong. No, more than that. Tang Zhan sighed. No, as expected, I know nothing about him. I cannot figure him out. Tang Pei, who was listening, spoke with a faint smile. You couldn't figure it out because you were weak. That could be the case. Lord, there is no need to listen to him anymore. 
Please punish him and send me to the four seas. I'll take care of this in return. Tang Gunak turned and looked at Tang Pei. Tang Pei flinched when he met his eyes with the Lord and bowed his head. Tang Gunak, who suppressed Tang Pei with just a look, changed his expression and looked at Tang Zhan with interest. This was the first time Tang Zhan had judged someone like this. Listening to what you said, it seems like his strength wasn't that outstanding, right? In my opinion, yes. But you seem the most conscious of Mount Hua's divine dragon among them. Tang Gunak's eyes lit up. What is the reason? You wouldn't put any weight on the meaningless titles or fame he's acquired in Gongho. So what was special about him? He... After contemplating for a moment, Tang Zhan spoke. He said that I should add another dagger to our technique. What? Tang Gunak jumped up from his seat. This was unlike how he had protected his image and maintained his composure until now. A terrifying key rose from his entire body. Tang Pei and Tang Zhan both trembled at the aura the family's lord exuded. To behave like this in front of his children, one could tell just how surprised he was. What did you say? He mentioned, adding the twelfth dagger. And you're sure about this? Yes. Tang Zhan frowned. Does he know of the twelve daggers? This was a technique of the Sichuang Tang family, a secret technique that only a few people knew about. Those who master handling eleven are the only ones taught about this. That was the twelve. It was a vision that could be considered the culmination of Sichuang Tang's abilities. When people speak about the Tang family, they think only of hidden daggers and unseen poisons, but the twelve daggers were another vision that didn't fall behind the other two. It was difficult, so difficult that it all but faded away in recent times. What's the probability that the child knew about this in advance? I... No, never mind. It's impossible. Those who know the existence of the twelfth dagger no longer exist in Ganghou. Even in the Sichuang Tang family, this was extremely confidential. Could an outsider have known? It could happen. Nothing in the world can be perfectly hidden. But such a fact could not be known by a child. Moreover, wasn't he a disciple of the fallen Mount Hua sect? Tang Gunak's eyes went cold. Speak from the start. After some time, Tang Gunak heard the entire retelling and spoke in a heavy voice. You used the hidden explosion dagger. Yes. And he still avoided it. Of course, this was shocking, but it wasn't the outcome of the match that was important now. That's not enough to give a clue about the twelve daggers. The complete hidden explosion dagger secretly paves the way to the twelfth dagger. It's a norm to aim for it. Yes. So then, does that mean that he witnessed your technique and determined that it would be complete if you added another dagger after only seeing you use it once? Not possible. It is impossible. Tang Gunak mumbled, forgetting his children were there. If that is possible, then his understanding of martial arts surpasses mine. No. No. Perhaps he didn't calculate that with his mind. Maybe it was just a sense. But even knowing it with sense alone. A terrifying genius. Even that would be enough. There is a terrifying genius. A monster in Mount Hua. Get ready. Yes? I need to see for myself. L Lord. Tang Pei looked shocked and spoke. Lord, that cannot happen. This isn't worthy of you going. Tang Gunak glared at Tang Pei with a fearsome expression, causing him to flinch. How was the Tang family able to establish itself as the head of Sichuan for a hundred years? Do you remember? That. Answer me. Tang Pei gulped and responded. Because our ancestors have risked their lives to develop the family. Wrong. Tang Gunak spoke in a hoarse voice. Our Tang family isn't the only one who risked their lives for their family. Even now, many families and sects are risking everything they have for their development. Nevertheless, the one reason why the Tang family has achieved this incomparable status is because... Tang Gunak looked at his son in the eyes and then whispered as if speaking a secret. 
because we are tenacious. There is no small work or big work. It is the tenacity to do anything that created a family like ours. Perseverance that doesn't miss a thing. Perseverance to track down any danger that could harm our family. The persistence to pursue any potential benefit. Tang Gunak looked at Tang Pei and spoke. You want to be a noble? No. Keep in mind, there's no need for nobles in the Tang family. Those who worry about their pride and saving face have no right to lead this family. Even if everyone in the world points their fingers, this family will only benefit from those who are willing to do anything for the family. Do you understand what I mean? I, I, I will keep it in mind, Lord. Loser. Tangana gave a cold glance and moved. I will go to the merchant's chamber and see with my own eyes whether that child is a genius or just a blabbering nonsense. Tang Zhang sighed with his eyes closed. Things were quickly escalating out of control. Why won't you come? Ugh, I just don't want to. Why is this idiot suddenly acting like this? Yun Zhong pounded on his chest in frustration. This guy was really unpredictable. Really? You aren't going to go? That's right. In the end, Yun Zhong burst into anger. Then stay here. We're going to Yunnan. You can stay here. Okay. Ugh. Yun Zhong scratched his head. Right when he was about to say something more. Sai Hung. Yu Yi Sar called for Baek Chun. What? Will the Tang family stand still? Baek Chun sighed. How could they stand still? Of course, they'll try to find us. So why don't we head over to Yunnan as soon as possible? We won't know what will happen to us if we stay here. Then what about the merchant chamber? Huh? The Tang family must be enraged by now. What if we aren't here? What will happen to the merchant chamber? The anger of the Tang family will be directed here. Baek Chun glanced at Zhou Pyeong. Zhou Pyeong smiled and shook his head. You don't have to worry about that. We've maintained a good relationship with the Tang family for a long time. The Sichuang Tang family? Zhou Pyeong went silent. He couldn't speak because he knew that despite having long-standing relations, the Tang family was capable of incredible persistence and cruelty. I am a bit worried. Yun Zhong spoke with a heavy voice. The fact that they came here last night clearly shows that they believe it's important to lower Jogul's position. However, instead of achieving that goal, they were humiliated instead. Their anger is sure to be great. Baek Chun frowned. Does that mean leaving this place quickly won't be enough to solve the problem? Baek Chun looked at Zhou Pyeong again. A slightly embarrassed smile emerged on his face. Only then did Baek Chun understand. He was trying to let us go. Perhaps Zhou Pyeong had already thought of this, so he decided to let the disciples of Man Hua leave for Yunnan before the Tang family arrived. No matter how strong the Tang family was, they wouldn't dare to pursue them into Yunnan. And then the anger of the Tang family would all be directed toward the merchant chamber. I can't believe I'll overlook this. Baek Chun's face flushed red. He was so excited that Jogul took down Tangzhan and they found a way to Yunnan that he missed something this simple. Then, he looked to the side. Chongmyung's behavior of not wanting to go to Yunnan made sense. Perhaps Chongmyung already knew this. However, he couldn't say it as it would seem like he was disregarding the favor of the Four Seas Merchant Chamber Lord. Does this mean we have to deal with more trouble, idiot? Huh? <sighs> Enough. Baek Chun sighed. Lord. Yes, disciple Baek Chun. It seems like the trip to Yunnan will need to be delayed for a while. Disciple. Baek Chun shook his head. This happened because of us. We will deal with it. Why is it us? This time, it was entirely because of Sasuke. Anyway, Baek Chun controlled his expression and continued. We will not leave this place. Even if we leave, we will go after sorting out the matter with the Tang family. Zhou Pyeong's face, which was struggling to fake a calm demeanor, grew slightly distorted until it eventually collapsed. 
Are you saying this even after knowing how frightening the Tang family is? Indeed, they walked in and Tang Zhan was defeated. But compared to the strength of the family, that child is nothing. Get out of here now. Right now. If not... Oh, it's all fine now. Huh? Zhou Peng tilted his head at Chong Myung's sudden interruption. Chong Myung smiled. They've come much sooner than I thought. Looks like they're already here. As soon as he finished speaking, the outside began to buzz with a sudden clamor. Oh, already? Zhou Peng jumped up from his seat and prepared to run away, hoping the others could escape. L Lord! At that moment, an urgent voice broke into the atmosphere. The head of the Sichuan Tang family has come to visit! Blood drained from Zhou Peng's face. D this is the end. Zhou Peng lost any strength in his legs and sat down on the spot. Chapter 192 Such a big figure has suddenly appeared. L Lord. Even Beg Chun, who didn't lose his composure normally, instantly went red with shock. The Sichuan Tang family. How many in the world wouldn't be flustered at the formidable name being called in front of them? Wow, such a big figure has suddenly appeared. Well, there was Chong Myung. That... That bastard probably doesn't even know what it means to be shocked or confused. L Lord Tang! Yun Zhong also couldn't hide how shocked he was. This isn't like adults just getting involved in children's fights. The Lord of the Tang family is here personally. Beg Chun bit his lip. He thought that the Tang family would intervene, but he never even imagined a situation where the head of the Tang family would take the initiative to do it. It wasn't just Beg Chun. Everyone there couldn't understand why and how the situation came about. And at that moment, Zhou Pyong, who had sat on the floor, came to his senses and got up as he shouted. You mean the head of the Tang family is directly here? Yes. Where is he? He is at the front door waiting for you. Zhou Pyong gulped, waiting outside until the head of the house opened the door. It meant that he was still being polite to them. If he had come to see blood spill, the man wouldn't have cared about all those things and would have just barged in. At least, that was what Zhou Pyong was thinking. Gul! Yes, father! Zhou Gul hurried to his father with a worried expression. From now on, no matter what happens, do not come out. Huh? Promise me! Do it! Yes, I understand. Zhou Pyong looked at him with a stern gaze. Neither will any of you. You absolutely do not step out. You do not know what it means to go against the Tang family, especially in Sichuan. Don't ever come outside. At that earnest and resolute tone, Beg Chun nodded his head. Phew. Taking a deep breath, Zhou Pyong turned with a stiff face and stepped out. He wondered if he should just tell them all to run away. However, since the head of the Tang family had come, it would be impossible to run away because the head of the Sichuan Tang family would never move alone. Perhaps by now, all the Tang family members who had come to escort the man here must have surrounded the house already. We're trapped. It was said that when bitten by a tiger, a person has the chance to survive as long as he doesn't lose consciousness. Of course, this wasn't wrong, but only about one in a thousand would be lucky enough to escape. The problem was that most people who were bitten by tigers would die whether they were conscious or not. Zhou Peng bit his lip and stood in front of the door. Behind this door was the tiger. No, a truly terrifying man, incomparable to a tiger, was now waiting to bite him. Seeing the people near the door trembling, Zhou Peng felt grateful for those who didn't leave him. If the man on the other side pushed open the door, they might have outright fainted. Because that was how powerful the head of the Sichuan Tang family was. Open the door. Yes! With Zhou Peng's orders, the door opened, and through the opening, a dignified man in a green robe could be seen. 
Zhou Peng bowed his head before the door even fully opened. It is an honor to see the head of the Sichuang Tang family. Tang Gena looked at Zhou Peng and nodded. It has been so long. Yes, Lord. I should have visited you first. Please punish me for making such a precious person come all the way here. Enough with the politeness. I am here for work. Zhou Peng gulped. Would you like to come inside? That doesn't sound bad. I'll guide you. With a stiff face, Zhou Peng guided Tang Gunak into the house. As Tang Gunak was being guided, Tang Pei and Tang Zhan followed them. Tang Zhan had made everyone nervous last night when he visited them. But now Zhou Peng didn't even care about him. No one would look at a wild cat when a tiger was right next to it. And it had been so long since Zhou Peng's back, which was usually stiff since he has guided the merchants, was now lowered and humble towards the Tang family. What else can I do? Zhou Peng already knew it. There was nothing that he could actually do. What was important now wasn't how he would react, but rather what Tang Gunak was thinking when he came here. For now, let's... Merchant Lord. At that moment, Zhou Peng stopped as he heard the low voice from behind him and went stiff. Yes, Lord Tang. Are the children inside? By children, you mean... The children from Mount Hua. Zhou Peng closed his eyes a little. This is why he is here. Yes, they are. Lies meant nothing. At least not in front of this man. Hmm. There was a low hum from Tang Gunak. Just as Zhou Peng was holding his breath and shaking his head at the sound of Tang Gunak, the man spoke again. I think I want to see them. Cold sweat began to drip down Zhou Peng's back. He did expect this, but it felt too early. If the purpose of this man coming here was to see the disciples of Mount Hua, he thought he would at least corner Zhou Peng for it. The fact that he spoke about this right away meant that he didn't want to deal with anything else and that he wanted to head right for the disciples of Mount Hua. Merchant Lord. Uh, ah, uh, yes. Zhou Peng, who was back to reality, bowed his head. It cannot be difficult to meet them, right? Uh, of course, but... Even using all of his mind to look for a way out of the situation, he couldn't find anything. Was there no way to not show that those people were in here? Lord Tang, wh what happened yesterday? Ah, uh, right. Tang Gunak looked at Zhou Peng and smiled. Congratulations. Uh -huh. I heard that the second son managed to show extraordinary results. He made sure that Tang Zhan was humiliated. Zhou Peng's eyes trembled. It was just luck. How could my son even go against yours? <laughs> Humility is a good thing. A smile crept onto his lips. But excessive humility makes the other person feel uncomfortable. If it is something to be happy about, then you should feel free to rejoice. Yes, my lord. Zhou Peng was so shocked that he couldn't say anything, and Tang Gunak turned his head. Tang Zhan. Yes, lord. Tell me, did you get defeated because he was lucky? No. Jogul was strong. Right. And he looked back at Zhou Peng and spoke softly. It would have been better if that talent shone under the name of the Tang family. But I am glad that he found a place where he could show off and use his talent. D thank you. But... A low voice. The voice had a much different weight compared to his earlier tone. Zhou Peng bowed his head as if something was pushing it down. People are a lot more stupid than we think. Seeing what a few people with talent have done, they will assume that they could do it too. What do you think of that? Zhou Peng's body trembled. There was only one answer he could give. Even if people are stupid, do they not value themselves more? There aren't many people who are blinded by greed. Then how about you? Zhou Peng shook his head. In his eyes, he could see Tang Gunak smiling at him. His lips were smiling, but his eyes were cold. And facing the bizarre expression, Zhou Peng's legs trembled and his mouth turned dry. Are you dreaming of it? My dream is to be with Lord Tang. That is a nice answer. Tang Gunak nodded. Take me in. 
to see the children of Mount Hua. Lord Tang, they are... Didn't you listen to my words? His eyes turned cold. It is good that your son has achieved something great, but it seems like it has clouded the judgment of the Lord of the Merchants. I have said the same thing twice after coming here. Zhou Pyeong couldn't refuse anymore and then nodded his head. This is the third time. Bring the disciples of Mount Hua to me. I won't ask again. Zhou Pyeong's legs trembled again. His body was losing strength and his head felt dizzy. Any ordinary person who received the Tang Lord's wrath wouldn't be able to stand. But Zhou Pyeong didn't fall. With the little strength left in his body, he smiled. Zhou Pyeong, with an expression which couldn't smile, cry, or get worried, spoke. Lord Tang, the disciples of Mount Hua have come to my house as guests, and among them is my son. So, Zhou Pyeong shook his head. His face was wet with sweat, but his mind wasn't failing him. As a merchant and a host of the disciples, I cannot offer my guests up like that. Lord Tang looked at Zhou Pyeong with cold eyes. Even if your merchant chamber is destroyed, where in the world would a father be afraid of such things for his son? You don't seem to understand what destroying means. If I use my hands, not a single rat from this place can survive. You do know that. If you have to do that, Zhou Pyeong spoke with firm eyes. Please end it with my life alone. I will take responsibility for everything that has happened here. <laughs> it looks like people like you underestimate what the Tang family is. Tang Gunak snorted and continued. It seems like the merchant lord seems to be drunk on an unknown dream. You seem to have forgotten what it means to get in the way of the Tang family. Well, I will let you know the style of the Tang family and make sure you never forget it. Tang Gunak's fingers moved. It was the movement when Zhou Pyeong clenched his fist and hoped the kids would run away. Wait, that man has such a strange personality. Dud. The door to the central hall opened wide and a person walked out. The Disciple Ch Chong Myung. Zhou Pyeong was a bit shocked. I told you not to come. Ah, oh, Lord, look at the situation and tell me. That mister came all the way here on purpose to do this. Do you hear that? Huh? Zhou Pyeong turned his head with a bewildered face and looked at Tang Gunak. But Tang Gunak was staring at Chong Myung intently as if he didn't care about Zhou Pyeong. Are you Mount Hua's divine dragon? You aren't asking because you don't know, right? Hmm. Tang Gunak chuckled. Was there anyone who spoke up to him like this? Well, it couldn't be known. Maybe in the past, it happened. But since he became the head of the Tang family, this was the first time. And he smiled. But no one would think that this smile was a genuine one. How could one express a smile which would make them look so creepy? Tang Zhan, who was looking at this from the side, went stiff. He knew better than anyone what would happen when his father had such an expression. Mount Hua's divine dragon. It has to be the divine dragon. You are a little different from what I expected, but it is fine. Tang Genak smiled at Chong Myung. Let's see it. What kind of person you are. And his hand slowly slipped into his sleeve. Chapter 193 Such a big figure has suddenly appeared. As he approached Chong Myung, a formidable energy began to radiate from Tang Gunak's body. The energy, the force, was so overwhelming that even Tang Pei, Tang Zhan, and the others who were watching it became nervous. However, Chong Myung was confronting it directly and just stood there with a blank face and no further reaction. And then other people came into the room. Wait! Four people came from the central hall. Baek Chun, dressed in a white robe, quickly stood in front of Chong Myung and looked at Tang Gunak. I greet the lord of the Sichuan Tang family. I am Baek Chun, the second class disciple of Mount Hua. 
and Tang Genok stopped walking, but his hand was still inside his sleeve. The righteous sword of Hua. It is an honor that Lord Tang knows me. If I had heard that you were here, I would have come and greeted the Lord earlier, but we held no idea about this. This wasn't intentional, so we apologize deeply. Mm. Unlike Chong Myung, Tang Genok looked at this man who had some manners. The other disciples were also desperately putting up smiles. Shit, that crazy bastard. Can't he tell the difference between people he should annoy and people he shouldn't? Oh my god, how is he going against the head of the Tang family? This is bad, bad. Who would have thought he was this crazy? Because of him, they would all get caught and die here. Who was Tang Genok? Wasn't he the most famous of the Tang family? Although he had the name of Poison King, which was tribute to the head of the Sichuan Tang family, he was the head to whom this title sounded less awe-inspiring. Although there were many people who were skilled in the world, not a single person would ever make the mistake of ignoring the Tang family. Even if Hyunjong, the sect leader of Mount Hua, was here, he would be courteous to him. But this mouthy bastard! Baek Chun gulped. They were of different origins. Although Baek Chun had already met the elders of Wudang in the sword tomb, the momentum flowing from Tang Genok made them all look weak. He is a peerless warrior. Just looking at him could make people stop breathing. He couldn't say it out loud, but this was the first time he had met someone with such a great momentum. Something he had never felt in Mount Hua. It was clear that Tang Genok wasn't just another random person. I apologize for the rude remarks on behalf of my Saji. If you have to punish someone, let it be me. You? Yes. Baek Chun spoke firmly. I am in charge of them, so... Ah, uh, move out of the way! At that moment, Chungmyung grabbed Baek Chun and pulled him back. And Baek Chun, who was dragged back, looked at Chungmyung with a disappointed expression. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, you brat! The situation! Eh? It isn't like that. Huh? Chung Myung smirked and said, From the start, that man didn't care about Sasuke. He came here for me. What is that supposed to mean? Well, it's just like that. Chung Myung looked at Tang Gunak. Tang Gunak had come in with a ferocious force since he entered. Chung Myung tried to hold back, but he couldn't when he saw him threaten Jo Pyong. More than that, take a good look, since he is the real deal. Baek Chun's eyes widened. He never heard such words come from Chung Myung's mouth. If he said it, then it meant that Tang Genok was a person was so strong that even Chung Myung acknowledged him. Ugh. Chung Myung shook off Baek Chun's hand and hurried ahead. What's the matter? Matter? Yes, if you came here for someone, you must have some reason. Tang Genok smiled. I will ask you one thing. Go ahead. Do you think you will be able to stay alive after showing such a level of arrogance in front of me? These words made everyone go stiff. But Chung Myung was calm. Yes. What? I said yes. Maybe not a single person until now has done something like this. Well, I could be the first one. Tang Genok's face, which had a cold expression, now turned black. What is this kid? He had been pressuring Chung Myung for a while now. Anyone else would have already started to tremble and go blank. Even his son, Tang Pe, the next head, would die if this had happened. But Chung Myung was clearly holding on, as if he was used to being around this much pressure in his daily life. No, it was pointless to say he was holding on. It didn't look like he was suffering or anything. From where did such a monster appear? What was absurd was that Chung Myung didn't even look strong. Of course, in Gang Ho, people couldn't be judged by their appearance or the momentum they gave out normally. However, if one didn't achieve a natural body at a young age, this wouldn't have made sense. It was as if, there is nothing, if not, or it is indefinitely deep. Everyone was puzzled at the meaningless words from Tang Gunak, and only Chung Myung understood it. You came here to confirm it? Yes. But before that, I want to ask you one thing. Yes, go on. Do you think I will not kill you? Yes. How so? Do you think Mount Hua will have your back? 
even in front of the Tang family. Cheng Meng sighed with a darkened expression and said, Have my back? My back? I'd rather die than see that. I am the fucking back of this Mount Hua, you bastard. What other bastard could be there behind Mount Hua other than me? My waist is getting bent holding Mount Hua on my shoulders. Cheng Meng, who didn't like the sound of it, nodded and said, This isn't something I should speak about. Without anything to believe in, believing in Mount... Ah, no. Cheng Meng waved his hand. Anyway, it isn't that. Then, I believe in the Tang family and not Mount Hua. What do you mean? Cheng Meng looked at Tang Genok and said, I heard that the Sichuang Tang family does anything which helps and benefits the family, right? Could be. It was true, because he had heard it firsthand from the other bastard. If it helps our family, they won't hesitate to even sell the nation. Although I am a Tang, I have no emotional connection with even a corner of that place. It's no joke. They really won't hesitate to kill me if I obstruct the clan. Huh? Can they kill me? <laughs> How could they? I'm the Dark Lord. Then you won't kill me. Tangunak frowned. The reason. Because I will be the best swordsman in the world who will make Mount Hua the best sect in the world in the future. Even for Tangunak, this was an absurd declaration. And that is the reason. Of course, if you kill me here, you're just getting rid of someone who will become an enemy in the future. But if you make friends, you will have the best swordsman in the world as your ally. Which is the one with the most obvious advantage? It isn't likely for the Tang family to be associated with the title of the best in the world in my absence. Tang Genok stared silently. It is the devil's job to seduce. The words of Cheng Meng touched the intentions of Tang Genok. Even his sons didn't understand why he came here in person. But this child he was meeting for the first time was clenching his heart. You may be right. No. You are right. You are very smart. <laughs> it is a bit embarrassing if you openly praise me like that. Cheng Meng smiled, scratching his head. As you said, if you are going to be the best in the world in the future, then the Tang family will accept you as a friend. Friendship is essentially taking care of each other. <laughs> Thank you. But the coldness was still present in Tang Genok's eyes. That would be a matter of when. And that, too, is only if you prove yourself to be someone who can aim for that title. Baek Chun's face turned pale. The weight of the words that this person had just said couldn't be taken lightly. Even if the words were told without any sincerity, the words which were said could never be taken back. If Cheng Meng couldn't prove to Tang Genok, the lord of the Tang family, that he had the qualifications to become the best, then the man had the right to kill Cheng Meng here. You keep talking useless things. Cheng Meng shrugged. Are you confident? Ugh, you do know that it's considered nagging if you say it twice. Cheng Meng turned his head to his Saihongs. From now on, keep looking without blinking. Cheng Meng, will you be fine? Well, will you die? He will die. Huh? Eh? Are you saying I will die? Wow. This is absolutely unbelievable. For real. Leaving behind his Saiyongs, Chung Myung moved ahead. Sasuk, can I not stop you? Baek Chun wasn't sure what to do. Did he not believe in Chung Myung? I believe in him. Despite his rotten personality, he had the skills to be acknowledged by the Tang family head. Baek Chun trusted and believed Chung Myung more than anyone else in the world. But his opponent was Lord Tang. The Sichuan Tang family's lord. Even before Cheng Meng was born, this man had become the lord of the family and was known to be skilled as well. Would Cheng Meng be able to hold his ground against that man? No, it couldn't be known. That. Beg Chun was about to step out when someone held his clothes, and he turned to see Yu Yi Sir shake her head. Same. He wouldn't step in if he wasn't confident. Ah. Baek Chun nodded his head. He had heard it before. The biggest goal of that person wasn't to be the best in the world. It was to make Mount Hua the best sect in the world. If that was the case, this guy wouldn't mind jumping into mud. He wouldn't mind taking on any humiliation. 
He was putting everything aside for this without running away. Couldn't they trust him? Especially since he had walked ahead on his own two feet. Baek Chun stared at Chung Myung with anxious eyes. His shoulders weren't huge, yet they looked wider than before. However, even that back didn't reassure Baek Chun. Please. Baek Chun prayed and touched the handle of the sword. If Chung Myung was in real danger, I will not hesitate. Even if the opponent was the Lord Tang, Mount Hua would never abandon its disciples. Chung Myung stepped ahead as he watched Tang Gunak. But can I ask you one thing? I can allow that. Why did you come here for me? I don't remember doing anything to get your attention. It was Jogo Sayong who fought, so why me? Tang Gunak smiled at it and spoke in a low voice so that only he could hear it. You spoke of the Twelfth Dagger. Huh? I was interested in that. Huh? I didn't expect this. Soon, Cho Myung's face contorted. No, this bastard. That was Hyung. <laughs> Keep this a secret to yourself, Hyung. Others think that I only use eleven daggers. But in fact, there is a hidden one. A twelfth one. <laughs> this is a huge secret, you see. Huh? The one I used on Hyung last time and got smashed. How can you say such things? It hurts my pride. Pride? What pride, you idiot? Was it really a secret? What kind of crazy man gives out a secret like it's money hidden under his pillow? Oh, Sayong, my Sayong. If that bastard is there, beat him for me. I just guessed it. That guess is very important for us. Chong Myung's heart sank. Seeing this man, he really must have come to kill me. To kill Chong Myung, who knew his family's secret. Eh? No! Anxiety was building in Chong Myung. It's a simple task for you to prove yourself. Tang Gunak smiled. Ten. If you can endure ten attacks, I will recognize you as the best in the world. Huh? Ten attacks? Dodge ten attacks of the Poison King? I only need to dodge the attacks of the Poison King ten times? Ha 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 Ah, you! Are you really aiming to kill me? Do you really think someone as young as me can avoid ten attacks? Chong Myung groaned. Although he wasn't a junior of his, but that much is to be expected, I guess. Chong Myung grunted and spoke in a casual way. <sighs> okay, let's do this. If he was able to endure ten attacks from Tang Gunak, of course he would be called as the best in the world as the future generation. If there was someone who could do it, then they would have to be called something that went beyond just masters. Forget about the best rising star in the world. Even if it was the best rising star in history, he wouldn't be able to do it. Ugh. Ugh. Chong Myung groaned and looked at Tang Gunak. Fine. Do not forget your promise. Promise? Friends take care of each other. You said you would do everything you could. Of course. Then you should be prepared. Chong Myung grunted through his teeth. I'm going to pull the teeth out of the Tang family. If you can. Look at that. You think I'm joking? <laughs> Oh, you're going to regret that. Chapter 194 Such a big figure has suddenly appeared. Chong Myung and Tang Gunak faced each other at a distance. Everyone who watched them gulped. Of course, those who supported Chong Myung struggled to ease their anxiety. Sasuk, Yun Jong asked with a trembling voice. Lord Tang must be very strong, right? Yes. How strong? Baek Chun frowned. How strong? This was a hard question. Within the whole world, I don't know. But in Sichuan, he must be somewhere among the top three. I see. Yun Zhong's face went pale. Top three. Top three. Top three. How vast was the land of Sichuan? In addition, there were some ancient sects in this land. The Qingcheng sect and the Emei sect. Yet, Tang Genak would still rank within the top three strongest. 
Can Chong Myung deal with such a person? Baek Chun kept silent. In fact, the only answer he could give was that he had no idea. When making measurements, a standard needs to be set on both sides. For example, if Baek Chun were to measure Yoon Jung's strength, he would start with the degree of difference between himself and Yoon Jung. Through that comparison with himself, one could determine where Yoon Jung lies and then use that as a basis to discuss the strength of those similar to Yoon Jung. But what about Tang Gunak? I don't even know where to begin. Baek Chun cannot measure the Lord of the Tang family's power. The only conclusion he could reach is that his strength is immeasurable. As such, Tang Gunak must be strong. It was to the point where Baek Chun was getting goosebumps. But isn't it the same with Chong Myung? Baek Chun couldn't compare or measure the strength of Chong Myung. How could he predict the outcome of a battle between two people whose strengths were unknown? Just. Winning doesn't make sense. I knew it. But if he only attempts to hold on for 10 attacks, then it is a different story. Baek Chun spoke with certainty. If it were an ordinary man, he wouldn't be able to last for even one, let alone 10. But Chung Myung isn't ordinary. Baek Chun looked at the back of Chung Myung. I should watch without blinking. Baek Chun already knew that. If Chung Myung had set his mind on it, he could have avoided the fight with Tang Gunak. Sparring wasn't the only way for him to prove his strength. But Chung Myung provoked the man to create the situation and asked his Sayongs to observe carefully. Why? What a fucking bastard. Baek Chung grunted. What was Mount Hua lacking? One was strength. What else? The most obvious was an absolute master. It wasn't as though Mount Hua lacked powerful figures to fill its ranks. However, there was just no one in a high position that could make the disciples of Mount Hua look up to them and learn. Of course, there were Ungom and Hyunsang, but they couldn't describe what an absolute master was like to the disciples. There was no way to make others understand the power of those who entered the realm beyond humans. They needed someone strong enough to be at the absolute mastery level. So the disciples of Mount Hua could only guess and imagine such a person. They had been aiming for a level of strength that they couldn't see or feel. Now, in front of such disciples, an absolute master had appeared. Baek Chun bit his lip. Okay, I won't miss a single thing. No matter how accurately he could guess, it was bound to be different when seen in person. Just by watching this spar, Baek Chun and Mount Hua's other disciples could climb higher. With such thoughts, Baek Chun clenched his fists. Tang Gunak frowned upon seeing Chong Myung in front of him. I don't know. When he looked at his face, the child looked like a normal person. Usually, Tang Gunak could tell if the opponent was weaker or stronger than him to some extent when coming face to face. But with Chong Myung, everything seemed ambiguous and vague. It seemed empty, but also deep, like he was being sucked into an abyss. He seemed like a thoughtless child, but gave the sense of a sage, too. Tang Gunak was bewildered. Should I say it is bizarre? How could there be so many different aspects coming from one person? This wasn't simply curiosity, it was something more. Tang Gunak was curious about what was going inside this child so much that he couldn't stand it. It was reminiscent of a time when Tang Gunak was young and his father had come with a tightly wrapped present. He couldn't sleep a wink without checking what was inside it. Hmm. Tang Gunak noticed his feelings and felt strange. Have I ever been so excited in recent days? It was strange. Bizarre. Tang Gunak took a deep breath and looked straight at the source of his excitement. Ten attacks. This wasn't said to confirm with Chong Myung. It was more akin to Tang Gunak clarifying the purpose for himself. If this man let his excitement carry him away, then Chong Myung was done for. If you can last for ten attacks, I will. No, the Tang family will recognize you. What a surprise! Chong Myung held out his hand and nodded. Let's begin. There's no need to get ready. Tang Gunak smiled. That's bold. 
If someone else had dared to act like this in front of him, Tanganok would never forgive them. But strangely, he didn't feel that with Chongmyung. It's not arrogance. Is it confidence? There was no reason to hate Chongmyung. Confidence comes from skill, and skill comes from hard work. It was only natural for a warrior that tirelessly worked to improve himself to feel confident. Wasn't Chongmyung a hundred times better than his sons who have been trained by him constantly but still lacked the nerve to even look him in the eyes? I heard that my son's dagger technique was broken. Wasn't that Jogul Sahyung? It is the same. Huh? It's entirely different. It is nothing special. Chongmyung looked at Tang Genok with strange eyes. Blood doesn't lie. That other Tang bastard was pretending to be a serious person on the outside, but once he spoke, he was a fool. Perhaps this Lord Tang is stupid too. That is why I am going to use the same technique against you. Huh? The one that was already shown once? Do you think it is the same? Chong Myung smiled. <sighs> As if that's possible. You know it well. Even if it was the same dagger technique, it would never be the same implementation. Even if the same sword technique was used, Jogul, Baekchun, and Chong Myung would each display it differently. As such, there was no way the daggers and needle-based techniques of the Tang family could be the same. Because it all came down to skill. Tang Genok slid his hand into his sleeve. In his hand, what came out were old-looking throwing daggers. Chong Myung looked at the blades in Tang Genok's hand. He closed his eyes for a moment and opened them again with a slightly stiff face. Long time no see. Willow leaf throwing blades. You should think of it as an honor to face these blades. These daggers were the most loved by the one with the most perfect dagger technique in the long history of the Tang family. Chong Myung smiled. Well, I think I know about those throwing blades a lot better than you. He couldn't help but know. Those old stained blades. Because it was something his dear friend had used. The soul chasing dagger. You return to your family. It felt a little strange to see these blades in the hands of Tang Genok. Chong Myung let out a low sigh and calmed his mind. It is an honor. Honor. Pang! At that moment, along with a terrifying popping sound, the throwing blades in Tang Genok's hand flew like a beam passing through Chong Myung's face. Shh! Grazing past his cheek, a small incision split open, and the small line began to drip fresh blood. Seeing this, Tang Genok smiled eerily. The word honor doesn't fit, as this won't be an honorable death. Hearing those words, Chong Meng raised his hand and wiped the blood flowing from his cheek and then licked the blood on his fingertips. Oh! And then, with a look of disgust, he shook his hand. <coughs> I lost my appetite! He couldn't seem to get used to the taste of blood. Chong Meng rubbed the blood onto his clothes and watched Tang Genok grin. One attack. What? That was one attack. Now, there's nine left. Huh? Tang Genok looked blankly at Chong Myung. The dagger he released flew right by his face. He must have clearly seen the blade's speed and power, so it wouldn't be strange if he gave up and ran away immediately. But, nine more. I've never met someone like him. Grunt. Two of the throwing blades in Tang Genok's hand rubbed against each other, creating a grating sound. Nine more. The cold eyes of Tang Genok looked at Chong Myung. I think it will be more than enough to take your life. No, you're probably going to regret it, wasting one move so clumsily. You. I'll show you. Shring. Chong Myung unsheathed his sword. Why that was a mistake. Now, with this sword. At the same time, the playfulness disappeared from Chong Myung's face. His sword was slowly raised and aimed towards Tang Genok. As soon as the tip of Chong Myung's sword pointed at him, Tang Genok tightened the grip on his dagger. His face hardened at the unfamiliar feeling that filled his heart. What is this feeling? Right. Fear. Tang Genok bit his lip. He couldn't comprehend feeling horror from the sword of a child 
younger than his son. Impossible. The emotion disappeared from Tanganak's face. I am Tanganak, the Poison King. Tanganak, whose self-esteem was slightly hurt, began to embrace the situation. He had no intention of taking this lightly. If the child died because he was unable to stop an attack, then it would be the child's fault. What was the difference between this child and the many other people he had killed? But what if Cheng Myung succeeded in defending everything? The family will truly receive their first guest in decades. A guest who could be acknowledged and treated right. But, crack, crack, crack. Tanganak's eyes radiated a terrifying glare. That will not happen. At the same time, one of the willow leaf throwing blades in his hand was released once again. The attack this time wasn't just a simple threat. Starting from Tanganak's fingertips, the blade shot toward Chongmyung at speed imperceptible to the human eye. Kang! At that moment, Chongmyung gently swung his sword and slapped the dagger willow leaf throwing blade away. The deflected blade flew across the area and pierced the pillar behind Chongmyung. At the same time, Tanganak's eyes widened. He slapped it. Tanganak's technique was deflected. How? The throwing blade he released wasn't just fast. There was too much strength in it. If someone tried blocking it, the sword would shatter, and the dagger would pierce the swordsman's throat. However, without much effort, Chongmin just swung his sword and changed the dagger's path. Could anyone here, aside from Tang Genok, understand how difficult such a feat was? Probably not. A cruel smile rose on Tang Genok's lips. Looks like I underestimated you too much. I did tell you, you will regret it. Right. End. In an instant, Tanganak's sleeves began to swell up. At the same time, a weird flow of ki began to swirl around his body. His internal ki was circulating and brought out in full force. With that tremendous aura, the disciples of Mount Hua who stood behind them had retreated without realizing it. Cheng Myung flinched and stepped back. Tanganak spread his arm to the left and right. From now, the Poison King's anger was directed at Cheng Myung. I will fight you with all my might. Isn't that a bit harsh? Don't you know what a joke is? You idiot! This is nothing like the old Tang family. Chapter 195 Such a big figure has suddenly appeared! Cheng Myung didn't take his eyes off from the sleeves of Tang Gunak, which were swollen as if they would burst. The Soul Chasing Dagger and the Twelfth Dagger. Cheng Myung knew how terrifying the combined power of those two were. How many people of the demonic sect had those daggers taken down? The Soul Chasing Dagger, which had been the most reliable tool in supporting Cheng Myung in his past life, was now aiming for Cheng Myung's neck. <laughs> of course, it isn't on that level yet though. Tangbo, the man who made the throwing daggers and created his own martial arts. The level of martial arts that man had reached was unparalleled in the history of the Tang family. That was who he was. But now the person in front of him was the Poison King. He could use all the martial arts of the Tang family, but he wasn't that proficient in it. So his throwing blades couldn't be compared to the ones he had witnessed in the past. The problem was that Cheng Myung also wasn't anywhere close to where he was in his past life in terms of strength. Compared to the enormous difference between the Plum Blossom Sword Saint and Mount Hua's Divine Dragon, it was no exaggeration to say that the difference between the dagger's skill level and his power right now was as big as a mountain. If it hits, I really will die. A drop of sweat ran down his cheek. There was a reason to be nervous. The biggest drawback of the throwing blades was that it is difficult to recover the ones that were thrown. In other words, even if Tanganak had no intention of killing Chongmyung, he couldn't stop the blades from hitting him. Phew, 
After letting out a long breath, Cho Myung clenched his hand that was holding the sword. And in that moment, pat, three throwing blades slashed through the air. One was coming directly at him, and the other two were rotating towards him from the sides. The speed of the ones rotating were much faster than the ones coming straight for him. As a result, the three reached Chung Myung simultaneously. Ta! Chung Myung groaned as he stretched his sword forward. It shook. The tip of the sword shook. Soon, his sword began to vibrate more slowly, and then it looked like the sword had divided into multiple swords and soon covered the air. Sword barrier. Kung Kung Kung. The three throwing blades, which were aimed at him, couldn't break past his defense and bounced off. Tang Gunak, who had thought this would be the end, performed his next move without delay. It was five this time. Swish. Five knives were thrown at Chung Myung at different speeds. It was significantly slower than the three before, but they still had the same force and power behind them. Kung. Uh. The first collided with the sword barrier Chung Myung had set up. He felt like his wrist would break from the impact. Kung. The second dagger pushed his sword back. Chung Myung felt his entire body shake. Kung. The third created a huge gap in the sword barrier. Kung. The fourth destroyed it completely. Swish. The fifth was approaching Chung Myung with the intention to kill. Ugh. Chung Myung stretched out the sword after he recovered again. At the tip of the sword, a small bud bloomed. A plum blossom. Dozens of plum blossoms bloomed in an instant and wrapped around the throwing blades which flew in. Softness that controls hardness. Tang Gunak was a little shocked. But regardless of what he was feeling, his hands were reaching so that he could continue with the next attack. Pah! Before Chung Myung could subdue the fifth one, Tang Gunak was ready to throw the next knife. And the dagger thrown this time didn't have any huge strength behind it. It was just speed. The dagger, which disappeared upon releasing, moved through the air and appeared right in front of Chung Myung. Despite being aware of this, Chung Myung couldn't help but be a bit surprised. Ah! Chung Myung desperately twisted his body. <laughs> the throwing blade slightly grazed Chung Myung's chest and passed by while the fifth one, which hadn't been taken down yet, pierced into Chung Myung's thigh. Pah! After spinning in the air for a while, Chung Myung came back to the ground and pressed the blood points of his leg to stop the bleeding. Of course, he wasn't going to die because of this wound. However, if he shed a lot of blood, his stamina would drop, and if that happened, he would lose his concentration. Having fought in endless battles all his life, Chung Myung knew the best way to hold onto his body so that he could live through dire situations. He avoided it. Meanwhile, Tang Gunak was looking at Chung Myung as if he couldn't understand what was happening. He could understand the guy managing to block up the consecutive five lightning. However, the subsequent casting of the life-chasing flash wasn't something that a rising star could avoid. And this disciple of Mount Hua had avoided it perfectly. And to use softness to ease the power of the throwing blade. A disciple of Mount Hua. That meant that this guy's sword wasn't just bound to the teachings of Mount Hua. And that meant that he would grow stronger. No, he was already strong. For attacks! While Tang Gunak was still in shock, Chong Myung stood and looked at him. You have six moves left! Tang Gunak stretched his hand forward, and then he moved his hand up and then down. All of the throwing blades, which were on the floor, were retrieved back into his sleeve. Hmm. Tang Gunak caressed his knives and hummed. There was a thought in his mind. Six moves. It wasn't that he was worried about not being able to take down Chung Myung. If the purpose of this was to prove that he was the best in the world of the future generation, then this child has already accomplished his purpose. This child had amazing talent within him. He couldn't even imagine other people of the same age as Chung Myung being able to defeat this child. It probably won't take a long time for this child to go beyond the first sword of Mount Hua and be called as the first sword of the world. But his desire didn't die. I want to check further. Where the end for this child lay. He wanted to know what was hiding in the bottom of the well of this monster. 
even if the results of his actions would possibly kill the strongest man in the future with his own hands. Creak. Once again, the throwing blades made the scratching noise. It doesn't matter. The basic desire of a Mudim warrior to fight a strong opponent rose within the Lord of the Tang family after many years. And three daggers were thrown swiftly. Chong Meng watched it with a stiff face. Here I go. Tuck. His feet hit the ground heavily. This time, he rushed towards the throwing blades. The closer the distance, the higher the power. And it was natural that something that is thrown loses power as the distance increases. But he couldn't be victorious if he moved back. This was Tang Gunak's domain. And Chong Meng's sword wouldn't reach him now. Even if this was a spar for the sake of a test, if he didn't aim for victory in a battle which sought to take his life, it wouldn't make Chong Myung feel good. He had to take risks. The place to win is at the front, not the back. Kung Kung Kung! All three of the throwing blades were bounced away. Each time he hit a throwing blade, it felt like his wrist would shatter any moment. The body of Chong Myung wasn't strong enough to withstand the onslaught of the Poison King. Still, I have to endure it. All that was needed was to endure until the end of the spar. And then, something will be realized. Five attacks. <laughs> Chong Myung used the ground to propel himself forward and narrow the distance with Tang Gunak. Hmm. As if he was enjoying it, Tang Gunak made a sound and his sleeves were spread to the side. Pung! <laughs> and seven throwing blades were shot at once. Chong Meng went wide-eyed as he looked at them. Seven Star Soul Reaper. Tang Bo's specialty. If the demonic sect members who were killed by this technique were gathered, their bodies could create a small mountain. Huh? Chong Meng, instead of backing down, threw himself at the seven throwing blades. If he retreated to the back, it was the end. The seven throwing blades were aiming for his soul. If he stepped back, he would get caught in the flow of the weapons and would have his throat pierced. Chong Myung lifted his body exactly three inches into the air and began to dodge them as skillfully as he could. Uh, for the first time, Tang Ganak looked openly shocked as he saw the sight in front of him. To read the trajectory. If it had been Tang Bo on the other side, Chong Myung, in his current form, couldn't have escaped from it. However, for Chong Myung, this was a martial art which he was too familiar with, as familiar as he was with Man Hua's sword techniques. The seven throwing blades passed by Chong Myung. Sak! Sak! The left arm, the side, and the right ankle. Those three places were cut and blood had fallen to the ground. But Chong Myung kept rushing towards Tang Gunak without caring for his wound. Six attacks! Tang Gunak's face regained composure right away. Using his right hand, he collected the soul-chasing daggers. With his left hand, at the same time, he threw five of them at Chong Myung. Kwa! The soul-chasing daggers rotated at a formidable speed as they moved towards Chong Myung. This was something that Tang Zhan had shown the previous night against Zhou Gul. However, this couldn't be compared to what they had seen before, as if proving the fact that this martial arts execution was different depending on who used it. The soul chasing daggers that were released now couldn't be compared with Tang Zhan's by a long shot. These cannot be avoided. Chong Meng clenched his teeth. The five throwing blades were already coming for his body. And if he tried to dodge it and got caught, then it would be worse than just being pierced. Shuck! Chong Meng's plum blossom sword swung in midair like a whip. At the same time, plum blossoms began to bloom. One blossom. Two blossoms. The plum blossom multiplied in an instant, began to bloom endlessly, and covered the world. This. Tang Ganak looked a little surprised. Plum blossoms. It looked like the entire world was filled with plum blossoms. There was an endless sea of it. Kwa! And the rotating soul chasing daggers were digging into such a sea. Formidable power. Enormous strength. Yet, the sea was embracing everything. Tang Ganak's weapons fell to the floor, unable to break the waves of the plum blossoms. And Chong Myung, who rose through the sea of plum blossoms, moved towards Tang Ganak. Blood was dripping from his lips. 
It was the price he had to pay for trying to receive the attack of Tanganok by rapidly deploying the sword technique. Seven attacks! Chong Myung gulped the blood, which was coming to his mouth, and looked as calm as he could. Pung! At that moment, Chong Myung could see that the gap between the two was barely there, and Tanganok didn't miss it either. A throwing blade moved for Chong Myung. I've been through this once before. Using his speed, Chong Myung jumped up and slammed the throwing blade to the ground with his sword. Kwang! At that moment, the eyes of Chong Myung opened wide in shock. Another throwing blade was right in front of it. The throwing blade looked like it couldn't be bounced off. Too late! He didn't have time to react. Chong Myung! His Taehyungs were all screaming and shrieking as they too realized what was happening. The throwing blade hit Chong Myung right in the face. And Chong Myung's body, which collided with the force of the throwing blade, fell back like a kite which had its string cut off. Chapter 196 Go ahead if this feels unfair. Ah! With blood rising in his eyes, Baek Chun grabbed Jogul, who was about to run in. Let go! Let go! I'm going to kill him! Calm down! Calm down! How can you say that? That bastard did that to Chong Myung! I'm not dead, you brat! Huh? That moment, as Chong Myung was falling to the ground, he flipped around and landed. <sighs> Seeing that, Jogul sat down on the ground as if his legs had lost their strength. And Yun Jung also put his hands on Jogul's shoulder and sighed. They seemed shocked. Well, even Baek Chun had his heart almost jump out of his mouth. So why wouldn't these children seem shocked and terrified? Jogul had gone pale and Yun Jung looked like he would faint at any second. And Yu Yi Sol... She was the only one who hadn't lost her composure and pulled out her sword. Huh? Same, why did you bring out your sword? What were you planning to do with it? At that moment, Yun Jung, who had almost fainted, looked at Chong Myung. Chong Myung, who landed on the ground, raised his head, and in his mouth was a bloody throwing blade. Ch Kang! Chong Myung spit it out and then gulped down the blood forming in his mouth. I almost died. In that small moment, if he hadn't directed the internal key into his mouth and bit down on the throwing blade, his face would have been cut. Just the thought of it made a chill run down his spine. I didn't know that you would hide another throwing blade behind that last one. The technique he used wasn't the same as the one he used in the beginning. Behind one blade, the man cleverly released another. Of course, he didn't put any key into it as it would have been noticed by the opponent. Good. Tang Gnak nodded his head as he admired Chong Myung. Chong Myung's action was nothing but a simple improvisation. But it was amazing to have such a thought and even improvise it when one's life was at stake. Perhaps this was more impressionable than what Chong Myung had been showing him until then. At least you're not just a kid who simply has a hard time adjusting to something you don't know about and simply gives up your life. Such response and such ability, it was truly an extraordinary display of skills. Even the word monster genius can't be used for him. So how could this monster be described? Tang Gnak looked at Chong Myung. That's eight attacks! Chong Myung spit blood. His tongue was cut down around half an inch, and blood was constantly coming out of the wound. However, Chong Myung spoke, looking at Tang Gnak as if the pain didn't matter at all. You have two left. Hmm. Tang Gnak didn't smile anymore. He already acknowledged Chong Myung, and he was really going to do his best against someone he had acknowledged. Two moves is more than enough. Upon seeing his opponent's aura change, Chong Myung's face went stiff. There was a single throwing blade in Tang Gnak's hand. If you can handle this, it is your win. Tang Gnak began to induce Ki into the throwing blade in his hand. Goo. The throwing blade, which was shaking, 
began to move like a live carp. The key, induced inside the throwing blade, seemed as if it gave it life, and Cheng Myung began to sweat. This amazing key, this was definitely different from all he had faced until now. But, two more attacks. There were only two more attacks. If he could withstand two attacks, it was his victory. Cheng Myung was concentrating. There was sweat forming even on Tang Geunak's forehead, who had been rather calm and laid back until now. It meant that he was doing his best. Here he comes. Take this. The throwing blade that was on Tang Geunak's palm suddenly floated up and began to aim for Cheng Myung. What happened next couldn't be put into words, because it wouldn't be appropriate to say that it was moving fast when this throwing blade was flying slower than the one before it. The explosion dagger! The technique that Tang Jan had used against Jogul. The dark explosion dagger in the hands of Tang Geunak was different from Tang Jan's. Goo. Cheng Myung could feel his body tense as he saw it. The throwing blade that was flying slowly towards him began to envelop the surroundings. Soon, a huge vortex was created with the blade being the center. The dust began to rise up and an enormous wind force was created. <coughs> Cheng Myung held the handle of his sword. How could he deal with this? It was then, Kwang! with an explosion as if the sky itself was falling. Black and white throwing blades came for Chong Myung at a fast speed. He could feel it. He couldn't handle it. But he couldn't run away. Rotating at a speed and attracting everything like a tornado, the dark explosion dagger was coming for him. Then, Chong Myung put his sword forward. Don't overthink. This wasn't a situation where he could let his mind do the thinking and then deal with the situation. Believe. His sword knew everything. His sword contained everything. His sword was Mount Hua, and Mount Hua was his sword. He had to believe in that very sword. Fly! The sword moved smoothly. It was slow. Too slow. But this sword couldn't be slow, because the world itself floats slower than his sword. Bloom. At the tip of the sword, a plum blossom bloomed. At first, it was a small plum blossom. But soon, dozens of plum blossoms surrounded the tip of the sword. 24 Movement Plum Blossom Sword The strongest technique when it came to defense was revealed after a hundred years from the tip of the sword of Chong Myung. The plum blossoms bloomed as they overlapped one another and created a wall of flowers which couldn't be penetrated. The Plum Blossom Impenetrable Wall The key which rose from Chong Myung's dungeon created hundreds of plum blossoms and the plum blossoms, which were covering the space, covered even the flying path of the throwing blade. The dark explosion dagger pierced the wall of plum blossoms at once. The plum blossoms, unable to withstand the power of the dagger, collapsed and disappeared in an instant. As if hundreds of plum blossoms couldn't stop a single dagger, the dagger still hadn't lost its momentum and continued through the plum blossom impenetrable wall. Contrary to the scream, Chong Myung's feet were moving back and forth, and the plum blossoms kept blooming from his sword. If he cannot stop it with one swing, then he would swing his sword a dozen times. If swinging his sword a dozen times didn't stop it, then he would swing it a hundred times. The plum blossoms of Mount Hua would constantly bloom. Let the day go and welcome the night. Even if autumn passes and the winter comes, let the year itself change. They might fade now, but they will shine again. The sword of Chong Myung was also giving out endless plum blossoms. No strong force could break through this cycle. K -k -k. The dark explosion dagger, which was shot, began to make a metallic sound and started to lose its force. Chong Myung's eyes began to gleam in happiness. Chong Myung who was excited, began to tap further into his dungeon and produced more plum blossoms in this heated atmosphere. And at that moment, swish, Chong Myung shook his head. Another throwing blade. All of a sudden, another throwing blade was released by Tang Geunak. Was it towards Chong Myung? No. The throwing blade was released towards the dark explosion dagger, which was losing its force to move. Kwang! 
An explosion like sound, which could tear the eardrums of the observers, ensued, and the momentum of the dark explosion dagger doubled, tearing down the plum blossoms with even more power. Quah! And it flew for Chong Myung with a vortex that was big enough to devour Chong Myung whole. The tenth attack! Chong Myung clenched his teeth. The last one! Ah! And he rushed ahead. Grunt. His sword was unable to handle how hard his hands was clenching it. Everyone was screaming as he threw himself into this storm that was created by the dark explosion dagger. Ah! Chong Myung! One. Just one person. Baek Chun clenched his fist. Go, show us what the true sword of Mount Hua is like. Chong Myung rushed ahead towards the dark explosion dagger, which was moving like an earth dragon, winding up all the dust. All of the key in his dungeon was taken out and he swirled it around his body. And due to the strong internal key, the air outside was swirling around him. Chong Myung drew out every last bit of energy he could and put all his key into his sword. Woom. The sword, unable to withstand it, was screaming in his hand. The tip of the plum blossom sword was splitting, but Chong Myung was looking at one place alone. <coughs> With a scream to cheer himself up, Chong Myung stepped ahead. Woom. The floor was cracking down. Chong Myung used all the internal key he could and raised his sword up to strike it from the ground. Plum Blossom Destruction. Quang! The dark explosion dagger of Tanganak, which collided with that, passed over the head of Chong Myung with a huge explosion. <coughs> Blood began to gush out from Chong Myung's mouth, but he hid it. Chong Myung's feet touched the ground again, and he stumbled forward without being able to control his body. Not yet! It was coming. Right now, he could feel it, waiting to take his life from behind his back. Chong Myung kicked the ground and floated up in the air as he spun, and he saw it clearly. Swish! It was the sight of the dark explosion dagger, which he had deflected, spinning in the air and coming back for him. Returning dagger! How many times had he seen people die because of this? Everyone who was relieved, thinking they had stopped the dark explosion dagger, would die to this. This series of attacks from the Tang members was what made the family of Tang a proud one during his lifetime. Come! Chong Myung, who was in the air, drew his sword and accurately received the dagger with the sword. Kwang! As if his arm had shattered and as if everything within his body was being crushed, a shock ran through his body. Despite all that shock to his body, Chong Myung didn't faint. Rather, he was using all of the pain and the recoil of the shock to the body to move forward. He saw it. The face of Tang Genok was shocked as he looked at Chong Myung protesting to the end. Chong Myung, who had blocked both of them, flew toward Tang Genok, who was defenseless at a formidable speed. This is it! His hands were clenched so tight that the flow of blood to his arms had stopped, and his hand was breaking through the handle of the sword. Yet Chong Myung pulled out all the key that he could and swung the sword. Chak! The tip of the sword that ripped through the air and aimed for him came down on Tang Genok's shoulders. And... Puck! There was a sound of a sharp weapon piercing the flesh of a human, and the two bodies stopped in shock. As if time itself had stopped, their eyes met, one in pain and the other in shock. They were contrasting emotions. Chong Myung descended to the ground, thud. His face looked calm, but on the other hand, Tang Genok's face looked confounded, and the first one to talk was Chong Myung. Ten attacks! Yeah, you- Chong Myung's body was slowly falling down. Cheating bastard! Thud and he fell to the ground fully. Tang Genok looked at the collapsed man with blank eyes. He could see the Tang family's dagger in Chong Myung's stomach. This! Tang Genok's face contorted like a demon. His head slowly turned to his back. In his eyes, which seemed to contain all the anger of the world, he looked at Tang Pei, who had his hand outstretched. You! Fucking trash! Facing his anger, Tang Pei trembled. Look! Lord, I, I only, you bastard who has no idea what honor is. How dare you pollute my holy spar. I, I did that for the Lord. 
Shut up! Tanganak was raging in anger. Tang Pei, who had all the momentum of Tanganak directed towards him, flew back and coughed up blood. Even then, Tanganak, who was unable to resolve his anger, was gritting his teeth. What in the world could be a more shameful defeat than this? Chong Myung! Ah! Uh, you fucking dogs! The disciples of Mount Hua rushed to the fallen disciple and pulled him close to them. Tanganak let out a low sigh as he looked into the ferocious eyes of the disciples who were glaring at him. It'll be. Shh. Someone, dressed in all black, suddenly appeared behind the Lord. Yes, Lord. Move Mount Hua's divine dragon into the medicine hole. Tell them to save him at all costs. Yes. If Mount Hua's divine dragon dies, not only the practitioners, but everyone there will be. The cold eyes of Tanganak looked at the man and then said, Killed by the hands of their own lord. Cold sweat dripped down Ilbi's body. He'll definitely be saved. He has to be. As Ilbi approached Chongmyung, the disciples of Mount Hua blocked his way. Among them, Baekchun was glaring at Tanganak with his sword drawn. Do not approach him. Calm down, righteous sword of Hua. Do you want me to be calm so that you can take a dagger again and put it through his throat? Tanganak sighed. The medical practitioners in the Tang family are second to none. The Tang family is the best place to heal Mount Hua's divine dragon in Sichuan. But the place we can't trust at all right now is also the Tang family. Tanganak bit his lip. Normally, he wouldn't have been able to stand and hear such things being spoken from the mouths of people who were a lot younger than him. But now, he didn't even have anything to refute what they were saying. I lost. Baekchun's eyes widened. I lost this fight. It was the most tragic loss I could have had. So, at least give me the chance to restore my name and honor and prove that the Tang family isn't a cowardly place. Please. Tanganak bowed toward Baekchun. Seeing that, Baekchun bit his lip. We will come together then. Of course. Baekchun glanced back. He could see the Saiyums of Chongmyung losing their mind as they tried to stop the bleeding with all their might. He'll live through this, right? He will live, Tanganak said, even if I have to use everything in the hands of the Tang family. Seeing the pale face of Chongmyung, Baekchun said, be sure to keep your word. Baekchun hugged Chongmyung and lifted him up. Guide me. Chongmyung's hand was trembling as Baekchun grabbed the hem of his robe. Chapter 197 Go ahead if this feels unfair. Chongmyung felt dazed. Everything felt vague. What am I doing now? The scent of blood kept rushing to his nose. He knew that he was still alive only because of his body which kept hurting. All of this was unfamiliar to him. That was Tiong. Three throwing blades that took down the demonic sect people by the droves were now trying to attack Chongmyung from behind. Crack. There was an eerie sound as they fell down on the spot. Thud. Chongmyung looked at the blades at his feet with dazed eyes. The heads of the fallen demonic sect people that were trying to attack him turned to him, and soon the light disappeared from their eyes. They were dead. Right. Death. What are you doing? What is this in the middle of the fight, Dao Xiong? Get yourself together! Chongmyung turned his head and looked back. Tangbo. He tilted his head as he approached Chongmyung. No. Chongmyung raised his hand as he touched his forehead. His concentration was strangely lost. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the exhaustion is getting to me. Chongmyung shook his plum blossom sword, wiping the blood off it, and shoved it into his sheath. Tangbo grinned as he reached out to retrieve the throwing blades. It is bound to be exhausting. We have been at this for three days. Um, Hyung. You look really tired. You aren't even talking. Do you want some medicine? No. No, Hyung. Don't act like this. 
When other people are told that they will be given the spiritual pill of the Tang family, they close their eyes and just scope it down. Don't you believe in the Tang family? I do believe in the Tang family. Then? I don't believe in you. Ugh, you're saying that again? Because of what I gave to you last time? It was a mistake. Ugh, your mouth seriously has a life of its own. Shut it. Chung Myung, turn back. I'm heading back. Wait, Hyung, let's go together. Tang Bo quickly caught up with Chung Myung. Since we killed all their men, another group will come soon, right? Right. If that wasn't the case, there would be no reason for them to go through this much trouble. And suddenly, Chung Myung turned his head to the cold sensation he felt on his arm. Tang Bo was applying the golden scab medicine. It was a medicine for the cuts. How many times do I have to tell you that if you don't treat the wounds on time, they hurt more? Chung Myung frowned. <sighs> Leave it alone and it will heal with time. Yeah, sure, but it heals faster with these medicine. Stay still. Tang Bo tore off the hem of Chung Myung's robe and then smeared the golden scab medicine paste. The Tang family's golden scab medicine is something which cannot be bought with money. Be grateful. <laughs> with the same mouth with which you said you hate the Tang family, you now speak about how great their products are. That is that, and this is this. Besides, Tang Bo's face had a slightly bitter look. I didn't know before, but now I think I understand why my family is stubborn. After all, in the end, without strength, we amount to nothing. If the Tang family had power on its side, they wouldn't have had to run from Sichuan, and so many members wouldn't have lost their lives. Seeing Tang Bo speak with a heavy voice, Chong Myung frowned. I've been having these thoughts recently, Dao Was Hyung. Like what? It isn't that I care much about what the family members say, but if I had trusted and supported them a little more, maybe, maybe the family would have had a little strength on their side. Then, then maybe, I could have saved one more. Don't say nonsense. If you had gone there, you would have been annihilated as you blindly believed in your strength while going against them. <sighs> True. Tang Bo bowed his head with a bitter expression. And after a while, he looked up again. The bitterness on his face vanished as if it had been washed away, and his usual mischievous smile bloomed. So when the war is over, I'm going to try to help the family head a little this time. I was known to be the best head they could have had, but not once have I taken good care of them. Look at you sulking about it. That is something only Hyung the What? N no What is with the weather? Ugh, so gloomy. Why is the weather like this? Ugh. Chung Myung smiled. In fact, Chung Myung was no better than Tang Bo when it came to not doing his role right. The only thing he gave the sect was some fame because of his title as the Plum Blossom Sword Saint. He couldn't even properly look after his disciples nor help the descendants. He lived as he wanted and went where he wanted. Once this war ends, it will be different. And that time... But Hyung, huh? how about you make a promise with me? If I die during this war, Hyung will take care of the children of the Tang family. What nonsense is that? Even if I do my best, Hyung is more likely to survive than me. So, just listen to this young one's wishes for once and look after the kids. It is because I gave you the special pills and drinks. You can pay back with- If you are going to talk this shit, then go away. Go away. I'll stab you right here. It isn't such a difficult task. If you want to look after and raise your family, do it yourself. Survive. Whatever it takes. Ugh, you idiot. Chong Myung pushed Tang Bo to the side and walked ahead. Then it's a promise? Seriously. I said I'm going to give you the heavenly poison pill. Oh, no, seriously. This brat. Yes? Get over here. Let me give you a beating. <laughs> oh, it seems like I suffered a huge wound earlier. Why is my body... Seeing Tang Bo retreat, Chung Myung smiled. Why think about what happens after you die? Everything is over once you die anyway. <sighs> it still isn't like that. Even if I die, the rest will live. Daoist Hyung, you're a Taoist without any attachments in the world, so you won't understand such feelings. Tang Bo scratched his head. It's just like that. People think that way. And despite being unpleasant, the thought never leaves our heads. Chong Myung sighed and turned around. Ugh. Don't hand over your work to others. Do it yourself. Instead. Huh? 
I will end the war. I will cut off the head of the heavenly demon. <laughs> if it's Hyung, then it can be done. So until then, Chung Myung said, Survive and live on tenaciously. Yes, Tang Bo slowly approached Chung Myung from the side. Seeing him walk step by step along with him, Chung Myung let him do it. And Tang Bo died less than a month after that. Chung Myung opened his eyes. Huh? He got up. Ah! A sharp pain could be felt from his abdomen. He looked down to see a white cloth wrapped around his stomach. Doesn't seem like I died. <sighs> well, it is unlikely that I died from that. In the past, when we were at war, I survived even after being hit with a dagger. This body is more tenacious than a cockroach. Ah, oh, that is an insult to myself. But where am I? Chong Myung turned his head and became shocked. Huh? The disciples of Mount Hua were all spread out in front of him. Baek Chun, Yu Yi Seol, Yun Jong, and Jogul were all lying dead on the floor. Ah, not dead. They were sleeping like the dead. That scared me. Chong Myung glanced at them and smiled. They grew up without anything, so they sleep well on the floor too. Ugh, such pitiful beings. Chong Myung was about to wake Yun Jong up. Leave them alone. They didn't sleep for the last three days. Chong Myung shook his head. A man came in as the door opened. You are awake. The man who came in and spoke very slowly and softly was Tang Genak, the head of the Sichuan Tang family who had a spar with Chong Myung. There was no expression on his face. Chong Myung tilted and looked around. This is... Right. Why did I come to the Tang? No, wait. It has been three days? Right. You have been unconscious for three days. Chong Myung was shocked. Three days? No, he was sleeping for three days because of a stab to the stomach. Ugh, I'm weak. I'll accept that. Chong Myung grunted. In the past, if it was the same wound, he would have pulled out the dagger and applied medicine to it, and his body would barely give out. Chong Myung's eyes blazed at the thought of being weak. Then why are my Sasuks and Sayos like this? They said they won't leave your side until you have opened your eyes. I did ask them to get rest, but they drew their swords and resisted. I was scared something might happen, so I put them to sleep. They were next to me for three days? Three? They could have taken turns to keep watch, but the four of them together? Ugh, idiots! Stupid bastards! Chong Myung rolled his eyes and looked at Tang Genak. Then you should have moved them to a better place. When we tried to move them, they would groan and get up. So what do you want us to do? The Sihungs seem attached to you. If the children of my family were like this, my worries would have eased to some extent. <sighs> I am so jealous. Jealous, my... Chong Myung glanced at the Sihungs. Stupid ones. Really stupid ones. But... <clears throat> Chong Myung let out a low cough. A weird feeling ran through his heart. At that moment, Tang Genak bowed his head to Chong Myung. I apologize. Eh? It is all my fault. I didn't expect Tang Pei to actually commit such an act. No matter what I say, there can be no pardon for what I allowed to happen. I will do my best to relieve your anger. Hmm? Tang Genak lifted his head and spoke with a serious face. First, I admit my defeat. As promised, the Sichuan Tang family will recognize Chong Myung of Mount Hua as their internal guest and friend. Oh? And if you want, I can give you Tang Pei's head. Chong Myung was surprised. I raised my son wrong. If that helps your anger, I can do that. If it can restore the honor of the fallen family, I will do it. Tang Genak spoke with disgust. But his heart was different from what he was showing outside. If I speak to this extent, he would have no choice but to say no. Tang Genak lifted his head and looked at Chong Myung. Uh, unfortunately, Chong Myung's expression was a lot different from what Tang Genak had expected. No, it was entirely different. Chong Myung tilted his head. Is that all? Uh? I asked if that was all. Th then, 
Oh my! Chomil looked at Tanganak like he couldn't believe what was happening, as if he was seeing something he shouldn't. You put a knife in someone's stomach, and now what? A friend? A friend? If the kid did something wrong, then the parents should be held accountable. How can you pass the blame onto the kid? Oh my god, this is the Tang family. Tang! Oh my, this is the prestigious family? The prestigious one? I think the term prestigious should be removed. Chong Myung jumped up. No, this cannot happen. I need to run to Chengdu and spread word about how well the Tang family handles things. I will just tell those beggars. In three days, it will spread all around the world. K calm down. Tang Ganak began to sweat. If the lord of the Tang family was defeated in the fight with Mount Hua's divine dragon, and if it spread that the child of the Tang family did a sneak attack during a spar, the name of the Tang family was doomed. Even if they didn't like it, people would call the Tang family a part of the evil sect because they used poison. Eh? No. If I do that, my neck is next. You throw knives at sneak attacks during spars, so cutting down neck shouldn't be a big deal. I would have killed you if that was the case. Huh? Ah, oh, no. My words came out wrong. Tang Ganak began to sweat and looked at Chong Myung. What do you want? Are you asking because you don't know? A reward. There has to be a reward. Saying sorry for stabbing someone doesn't cut it. If things can be resolved with such words, why do we need officials to handle the problems? Why would wars happen? Yes, yes, of course. I will compensate for it. But the reward... What should... That is something which should be thought of carefully. How can I make go... No, make a good deal with each other. And... Chong Myung looked at him. First, I'm saying this as my body feels empty. Hmm? Huh? Give me the heavenly poison pill. Huh. Heavenly poisons? Yes. Now. I see. Tang Ganak's face contorted at it. This was a mistake. Looking at that face, Chong Myung brightly. Tang Bo! Tang Bo! Don't worry. I will take good care of your family. Huh? Is this taking care, you ask? Go ahead and come back to life if this feels unfair. <laughs>
Like that, we can have a great relationship. Tang Jia nodded. Think about it. What if the legacy of the Tang family was added to the power of Mount Hua's divine dragon? Then, as he says, it would be the number one. The number one menace of the world would be born. God damn it. Huh? This time, Tang Genak didn't cough. That thieving bastard. No matter how wrong I may have been, the heavenly poison pill. There aren't even that many left for the family. <clears throat> Tang Genak's body trembled. From his shaking shoulders, it was obvious how angry he was. Tang Jan. Tang Genak shook his head. Huh? The Lord's eyes seem to be getting red. Maybe I'm imagining it. Your Hyung will step down from the position of successor. Tang Jan was shocked. L Lord, think about it. About what? If you are Man Hua's divine dragon, would you join hands with us if Tang Pei is the successor? Ah, oh. Tang Jan nodded his head. It wouldn't be possible. Tang Pei was someone who had attacked Cheng Myung. Regardless of the punishment he was given, Chong Myung's anger couldn't be quenched. It isn't the people who matter, but the family as a whole. If we get something worthwhile by making Tang Pei step down, then making him step down isn't a huge deal. That is the way of the Tang family. I will remember this. And I will not let that little bastard forget this. Tang Genak's body trembled again. It was the first time Tang Jan had seen his father like this, so he decided to stay silent. And then, Tang Genak said, The seat of the successor is open. You will have to compete with your Hyungs. I will do my best. I trust that you will. And I have a task for you. Tang Jan looked at Tang Genak. Someone in our family needs to be friends with the Divine Dragon. From what I see, Manhua's divine dragon is very generous to his own. If you can become a person he trusts, the Tang family will be able to achieve much more than just a contractual relationship. Lord, Tang Jan looked at Tang Genak with determined eyes. I am not interested in the position of successor. Hmm? But, he continued, if it is something which will help the family, I will do it. Tang Genak smiled. Right. And he sighed as he spoke. But, be careful. He is no ordinary person. The ends of the eyes of Tanganak now had a water drop. Huh? Is he crying? Tangjan vowed again and again, I have to win over the heart of Mount Hua's divine dragon at all costs. I shouldn't stop with just being acquaintances, but I should become his friend. And to do that, I first need to be acquainted with him, with constant effort. But, there was just one thing. I didn't think the effort I was thinking of was this. Tang Jan sighed. Yeah, your hands are moving too slow. Sorry. Tang Jan, who came to his senses, concentrated on moving his hand. He worked on creating a cool breeze with the fan held in his hand. Kuh, the Tang family is also great at fanning. He was asked to be friends, but wasn't this different? Hmm. Chung Myung, who was lying on a soft chair, got up for a moment and whistled as he picked up the fruits in front of him. It wasn't just fruits. All kinds of meat and seafood were lined up in front of him. The cuisine of Sichuan, which is known to be one of the four delicacies of the land, was made with the rarest ingredients. Chong Myung, who drank up the white wine of Sichuan, went back to leaning on the chair. Ah, nice. Ah, so nice. Ah, this is heaven. However, the opinion of the observers were completely different. That looks like a sumptuous feast. A Dao's going after meat and alcohol. Ugh, this is nothing new, but it still shocks me each time. The disciples of Mount Hua shook their heads, looking at Chong Myung. I must have been crazy to worry about this bastard's well-being. No, what kind of guy who was hit with a knife can be this well? Ugh, he isn't human. Either way, Chong Myung just kept doing his thing with great excitement and ripped the duck leg apart and shoved it into his mouth. Ugh, Sasuk, Sayong, 
Try this. This is so juicy. And this alcohol is really expensive. Ugh, it's so sweet. Baek Chun looked at Chung Myung with blank eyes. Is this okay? No, it was weird if they didn't accept it. And it wasn't polite to say no once they had offered this to them. But this... Baek Chun looked at Chung Myung, who was lying on the chair. This house. He looks so comfortable that it's as if this house belongs to him. And now, the person who was fanning Chung Myung was none other than Tang Jan, the son of Tang Gunak. Does this make sense? Tang Jan, who received the gaze of Baek Chun, went red. Sichuan Tang greets their guests in the best way. Please do not feel burdened and rest. You're the reason why it's burdening. Why the hell are you here and standing there? And contrary to what everyone thought, Chung Myung was enjoying the situation. Ah, this is so nice. Unable to bear it any longer, Baek Chun said, Chung Myung, this is heaven. Chung Myung, huh? Chung Myung shook his head. Baek Chun, who was already losing it, firmly said, This is the Sichuan Tang family. Eh? I know. Sasuk, how can I not know that? Then, at least sit right. No matter how wide the chair is, you shouldn't lie down like that. And we are in someone else's house, so let's be polite. Ah, uh, I want that too. But? Chung Myung's face contorted, and he stroked the white bandage on his stomach. But what can I do when the place that was stabbed with the blade hurts a lot when I'm sitting? I need to stay like this until I get better. Baek Chun shook his head as if he had already known that his words wouldn't work. Yun Jong sneaked close to him and said, Should we attack him? What he meant was to take him out while he was injured. Baek Chun shook his head. <sighs> Just leave it alone. He'll get tired of it. Of course, there was a higher chance that such a day would never come. Baek Chun took a deep breath. I really thought my heart would fall out. Who would have thought that in just three days he would be this lively? Chung Myung really did have a resilient body. Disciple Tang Jan. Yes, Disciple Baek Chun. Is the Lord not coming? He is busy with some work. I see. He didn't want to see the face of Tang Gunok. But now, he hoped the man would come sooner than later to handle Chung Myung. And as if his wish had been granted by the heavens. Clack. The doors of the hall opened. And Tang Gunok walked in. And when he came inside, he flinched at the sight of Chung Myung lying down. It was none other than Tang Gunok who gave the order to have Man Hua's divine dragon treat it well. But this is... There is nothing lacking. Yes! Thanks to you, <laughs> the delicacy of Sichuan is really amazing, although it is a bit spicy. Once you get used to it, it tastes better. Right, so I'm going to eat until I get used to it. That's a good idea. The corners of Tang Gunak's lips curled up. He had a smile on his usual expressionless face. At that sight, everyone who was watching him coughed. Is he smiling or is he angry? Maybe it's both. Either way, Tang Gunak spoke without taking his eyes off Chong Myung. Are there any other things you aren't happy about? It's humid and hotter than where I come from, so it is a bit tough for me. And saying that, Chong Myung looked at Tang Jan and the fan. The gazes of the father and son met. My son seems to like you. I know. I didn't even ask him to do it, and he's doing it. Without being a bit grateful, Chung Myung drank the white wine. Gah! The drinks are delicious, and the food is even better. This is really a nice place. Right. Seeing this, Tang Gunak smiled sincerely this time, and he looked at the disciples of Mount Hua. It felt like they were thinking what Chung Myung was doing was disrespectful. Huh. <laughs> what do you know? You people don't know about the Tang family. The greatest courtesy the Tang family can give is to provide the best food and drinks to any guest that Chung Myung was receiving now. It might have been considered rude to other sects, but for the Tang family, this was the best way to show their utmost courtesy. This was the best from the Tang family that used poison and needles on their opponents. 
no matter how tall the person was, they would always bow in front of the food of the Tang family. But how many people would casually take drinks from the Tang family who works with poison? Even those who were among the medical practitioner families would be scared to do that. But now, Chung Myung was literally pouring and drinking drinks as he scarfed down the food. I wonder if he's acting like this because he knows. Well, whatever it was, Tang Ganak felt a little better seeing that. Because this meant that Chung Myung believed in the Tang family. Well, he is one strange man. He makes people feel good and then makes them tremble in anger. But he is someone who will never be ignored. But what is it? That. Tanganak bit his lip. He did decide to meet Mount Hua's divine dragon a few days later and not today. At that time, he decided to close the deal between the Tang family and Mount Hua separately. Nevertheless, he had another reason for coming here. That. Tanganak glanced to the sides again and again. He bit his lip, which gave a terrifying expression, and spoke with a low voice. Nothing. I just came here simply. It was then. Tang. He heard a weird knock. And. Peek. Huh? Something popped out from the door. Uh, that. Was that a human head? <clears throat> Tanganak, who had a distorted face, suddenly stared at Chung Myung with a pale face. What was it with that old man? Scary. I... I want... to introduce you to someone. Huh? Introduce? Isn't it nice if... you... young people... get along with one another? It would be. In particular... Someone who's just like you. Huh? No, nothing. Tanganak shook his head, and unable to hide the annoyed expression on his face, he sighed. <sighs> Come in. At that moment, someone appeared through the door. Huh? 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 The eyes of all the disciples of Manhua went wide. Was it shock? No, it wasn't shock, but... The first thing which caught their eyes was the gorgeous court attire. However, their eyes moved from the dress and everyone who saw the face became stunned. What is this? So pretty. Oh my, she is a beauty. She is not lacking compared to Same. Oh, was such a person in the Tang family? Yunjong, Baekchun, and Jogul looked at the woman who had walked inside. Give your greetings. Tang Soso -so of the Tang family greets the heroes of Mount Hua. The face was one thing, but the bright smile stole the prize. Who could hate someone who smiled so well? Ugh, Yun Jung bowed as he heard it. Huh, hello. Jogul poked Yun Jung on the side, and Yun Jung flinched as he shook his head. Seeing the reaction, Tang Nak's face contorted even more. My daughter... She seems to be the same age as you, so I thought you could be good friends. So, I called for her. But, why are you leaving? And, do the people in the Tang family wear such clothes at home? It's her first time trying to make friends, so I guess she must have paid attention to how she looked. That? What was with those ornaments on her neck? What does that have to do with her paying attention? How many did she even wear? Don't tell me those are all hidden weapons. Tanganak's gaze was fixed on Chong Myung. This child wanted to meet you bre- N No, she wanted to meet you all. So I brought her here so that you can be introduced. So it- No, I hope you can have a good relationship. A good relationship, I mean. Eh? Huh? No way, it can't be. Chong Myung looked to the left and right. All the Saiyongs were looking at him with strange eyes. What? Was this a request for an arranged marriage? Me? Tanganak nodded his head. No, I am a Taoist. Ugh. Say hello. Seeing that, Tang So So smiled brightly and Chong Myung smiled too. Ugh, Saiyong! Set leader Saiyong! Save me!
Chapter 199 Go ahead if this feels unfair. Ugh. Exhausted, Chung Myung laid on the bed. Baek Chun and Yoon Jung shook their heads after seeing that. Are you fine? Ugh, that leech! Chung Myung seemed as if he would die at any moment. To him, the Tang family that had resembled heaven turned into hell in an instant when just a single thing changed. Because ever since then, Tang So So hadn't left Chung Myung alone for even a second. Whenever he ate, she would stay by his side to serve him. And when he drank, she would keep pouring and wouldn't even put down the bottle and kept following him. In the end, Chung Myung had to run away and escape to Baek Chun's room. Go back to your room. Sasuk! Yes? I'm really here because I'm afraid. Yoon Jung, who listened to Chung Myung's words, smiled. She seems fine to me. Why? But Baek Chun had a different opinion. You should learn to speak even if your snout is crooked. This is too much. Simply too much. Right. Isn't she also the only daughter of the Tang family? Chung Myung groaned. She isn't an only daughter. She's a poison maiden. Well, I guess that's also true. Translator note. The words only daughter and poison maiden are the same in Korean. Marriage? I'd rather die than do that. I'm a Taoist. What are they thinking? Taoist of Mount Hua can get married though. We aren't barred from getting married. Yun Jong nod his head. Right. There are some adults who got married in the sect. Ugh. Chong Myung groaned. Ugh. You have to be crazy to get married to the daughter of the Tang family. Ugh. Bastards. There is no such thing as goodness. Only poison. Just poison. And once you ingest poison, there is no taking it out. No. That bastard called the Poison King. Is this how he releases poison into the world? Rather, I would prefer if he used real poison on me. I can at least use internal key to release it out. But this poison... This poison cannot be stopped by that. The most troublesome thing for Chung Myung were problems which couldn't be stopped by force. And the dagger that was prepared by the Tang family's head accurately pierced his weakness. If you think she seems fine, why don't Yun Jung Sayong go for her? I doubt she'll want me. I know that, but... What? When Chung Myung laid back down and said that, Yun Jung made a strange expression and spoke to Baek Chun with a bit of an evil expression. Sasuk, if you think about it, this isn't bad. Oh? Isn't there an old saying that says marriage takes a long time to work? Wouldn't that guy also come to his senses if he gets married? Besides, it's even better for Mount Hua if the Tang family gets close to us by blood. Yun Jong, huh? I have never been more disappointed in you than today. This is really heartbreaking for me. Why? Shouldn't you think about the woman who gets married to that guy? <gasps> I was short-sighted. Please punish me, Sasuk. These idiots! When Chung Myung looked at Yun Jung and Baek Chun, they turned their heads away and coughed. We said nothing wrong. Humans should have a conscience. At that time, Jogo smiled and said, They say that the daughter of the Sichuan Tang family is the most precious treasure in the world and that she is treated like a treasure. Then ask them to treasure her more. Still, it's nice that they are the ones who made the first move. Making the first move is to throw poison at us? Poison? Is this the Tang family's way of looking after people? Chong Myung sighed deeply at this. Right, that man is highly calculative. Or, maybe he was someone who didn't care about other things. Anyway, thanks to his actions, Chong Myung couldn't even dare get out of this place. Why isn't he coming? Tang So So asked. Tang Jan, who watched it, sighed deeply. Nuna, how about taking it down a notch? You stay shut. He pursed his lips at her words. It is strange. There is no reason why I should be avoided like this. Why is that? Because I am pretty. Tang Jan frowned. I cannot say anything since it is true. Since ancient times, it has been said that people who speak the truth die early. And now, Tang Jan started to understand why. Is it because he is a Taoist? Maybe he lacks the eye for beauty. Or is it because he doesn't have the eyes to see beauty as he lived in the mountains since he was young? Why is he running away from me? 
Maybe he isn't interested in women. Are there such men in the world? Tang Zhan sighed. But it is strange. Actually, Tang Soso wasn't someone who just blindly wanted to get married. She was someone who avoided such things. So why did she suddenly change her mind? Do you like Mount Hua's divine dragon? Zhan. Yes, Nuna. I saw him yesterday for the first time. What do I know about him? And I don't have any mystical power to know what goes on inside the hearts of people. Then why are you so active in pursuing him? Tang Soso looked at Tang Zhan with a warm gaze and said, When can I get married if I miss this chance? Tang Zhan couldn't speak as he heard this. Father loves me too much, and he is the head of the Tang family. My father is someone who puts the position of Lord first, and the Tang family next. And there will come a time when he cannot put off my marriage any longer and will try to get it done. And he will want me to get married to a powerful family right here in Sichuan. True. I will die of frustration in such places. But what can I do? I will have to accept it considering it as my destiny. Since I am the daughter of the Tang family, it is inevitable for me. But... It is different from Mount Hua's divine dragon. I don't like the fact that he is someone living in the mountains, but he is a person that father recognizes, and he is considered to be someone who will be the best in the world. If you want to get married, you want it to be with someone who has a name, so you can be recognized as the wife of the best in the world. Tang Soso looked at Tang Zhan. Have you lost it? Huh? What is the use of that? And he isn't the best yet. Then why? If he is aiming for that title, he won't be able to visit home because of being busy with practice. Then I'll wither away like a flower. Ah, oh, so sad. Just where can I find such a good deal? Tang Zhan was confused as he looked at her. No, good deal. That? That is a good deal. It is a hundred times better than a life where everything and everyone is interfering with my life. If I am married into a powerful family, I have to be formal to everyone I meet all my life. Can you live like that? No. Ugh. I can never live like that. To not care about people. To not care about the husband who will have to protect me. Ugh. I have to catch that person even if it means death. Tang Soso's eyes lit up. Father will be against it, but it isn't like he's going to live my life for me, right? Tang Zhan was dumbfounded. She has it all planned out. For Tang Soso, her ultimate goal was to be happy, and the enthusiasm she had for getting the goal done was something people would applaud. Mount Hua's divine dragon isn't such an easygoing person. It might not go your way. It seems like you have made mistakes again. Huh? I don't intend to control him. No. I cannot do that. How can I think of controlling the person my father approves of? I will respect and be considerate of him. Then, love. What is so great about it? Love is basically just friendship that grows when we continue to live together. Anyway, there is no more trouble apart from this. And see, I have a pretty good face too. He might not put me in his eyes right away, but as time goes, that person will also have to change his mind. Tang Zhan sighed as he looked at his elder sister, overflowing with excitement. But he couldn't blame her. This was because he knew what kind of future she would have if she didn't try this. The women of the Tang family weren't recognized as Tang family members. They couldn't carry the legacy of the family, nor could they learn martial arts. The only thing passed down to them were the techniques that all the women were given. The direct line, for example, the sons, were the only ones who could enjoy the real techniques. And since she was the daughter of the Tang family, Tang Soso couldn't even go outside and play with other kids. She was brought up like a flower in the garden. And when the time came, this flower would be handed over to someone else. Sold. How could one be happy in such a marriage? No matter how much Tang Ganak loved his daughter, he couldn't change the tradition of the Tang family. Zhan. Yes, Nuna. You help me too. I need to be happy, and the key to happiness for now is that man. I need to marry him at all costs. I'm ready to make it happen by any means necessary. So you help me, and I will help you too. Huh? 
Help me with what? I will make sure no one disrespects my younger brother. You will also become the brother-in-law of the best in the world, right? Help me. Tang Zhan nodded. I trust you. Lightly holding the other's hands, the two had an intense light shine in their eyes. A few rooms away, Chong Myung felt an unknown chill run down his back. Both eyes were wide open. No! Chong Myung, who looked around, sighed and climbed up the roof. Ah, oh, my life! In Mount Hua, he was chased by Yu Yi Sir, and now, in the Tang family, it was Tang So So. The Plum Blossom Sword Saint, who had nothing to fear in the world, was now running away from little girl who hadn't lived half the life he had lived. Just admit it. Ah, oh, then you marry her! Chung Myung pointed at the sky and yelled, and then grabbed the bandage. Ugh! Chung Myung's face contorted at the throbbing pain. It hurts. He didn't show weakness in front of the Tang Lord. The more he appreciated Chung Myung, the more he gained. He couldn't act weak in front of the Sayongs, too. They would be sad for him. Perhaps they would even feel helpless. Ugh! It is strange! Sayong! He had never been such a considerate person. As the days went by, there were more and more changes. In the old days, he thought feelings were terrible. Chong Myung smiled and poured a drink for himself. Gah! He wiped his lips and looked at the moon in the night sky. Weak. I am weak. He got hurt in the spar with the Tang Lord. If it was in the past, he could have handled it without even getting a scratch on his body. On the battlefield, the techniques of the Tang family were known to be a little cowardly as they utilized methods that hit and killed their enemies. If only Chong Myung had been a bit stronger, the attack, he could have avoided the sneak attack. Ugh, I am fucking weak. When he thought about it, it made sense. It had only been a few years ago that Chong Myung woke up after dying. The exact number of years was three, but he had trained for less than that and it was amazing that he had become this strong in such a short time. No matter how strong he aimed to be, he couldn't catch up to his old self within three years. I know that, but that cannot be an excuse. Chong Myung's eyes turned firm. Chong Myung knew how heartless Kang Ho was and how dangerous it could be. It would be nice to just be at peace and take time to get stronger. But the chances... I will get stronger... He had to go beyond the level of the Plum Blossom Sword Saint. That would be enough to protect Mount Hua from any danger. Chong Myung touched his arm, and then he took out the Heavenly Poison Pill of the Tang family and the Soul Vitality Pill in both hands. Will this work? Chong Myung frowned. This was dangerous. But if things went as he hoped it would, the problem will be solved at once. Even if he couldn't be as strong as he was in the past, he would be able to have an advantage when displaying his skills. Once I get healed, Chong Myung held his breath and laid back. Disciple Chong Myung! Disciple Chong Myung! Oh, it's strange. I checked, but he wasn't in the room. Where did he go? Chong Myung began to sweat again. Chong Myung, who held his breath, only smiled after confirming that Tang So So had moved away. Oh, I can never beat her. There are certain things in the world on which strength could never work on. Things strength cannot overcome. And Chong Myung, who was in a desperate situation, finally realized it. Chapter 200 Go ahead if this feels unfair! Two people were running within the Tang family compound. Disciple Chong Myung, stop there! Tang So So was holding her skirt and rushed behind Chong Myung. But Chong Myung ran without even looking back. Let's talk for a moment. Wait! If we talk, you will change your mind. I will give you alcohol. Look here! You drink it! Chong Myung spoke resolutely. What is this? Oh, 
This is so freaking annoying. Stop and just stand still. Yeah, brat. Why are you running? Chung Myung, who rushed straight to the door, closed it behind him. And then after closing it, he looked around. She must have stopped. No matter how much she was following him, she couldn't have come this far. And as he sat on the ground, Chung Myung sighed. The eyes of Tang Genok and Chung Myung met. You are here. Yes. A subtle emotion was exchanged between the two. For now, take a seat. Right. Chung Myung sat across Tang Genok, and the man pushed the teapot towards Chung Myung. Would you like some tea? It's fine. My body is hot. It will help you cool down. Ah, then... Chong Myung poured the tea into the glass and drank it. Ugh. He put the cup down and looked at Tang Genok. All this is good. Hmm? What kind of person tries to get their daughter married to a Taoist? No. Regardless of how blood is thicker than water, aren't you being too blatant about this? Blatant. Tang Genok's expression crumbled. Huh? Seeing that, Chong Myung tilted his head. Isn't this something the Lord aimed for? I wouldn't give you my daughter even if I was blind. The atmosphere changed. Wait, then why is she like that? <sighs> How can I know? Tanganak grabbed his thigh. Ah, I will do it. Please introduce me. Only an introduction. Oh, would father rather have me go ahead and marry an old man on his deathbed? All you have to do is close your eyes and introduce me. <sighs> Tang Dena grabbed his head and looked at Chung Myung. Sure, he was Man Hua's divine dragon. From the point of view of the Tang family, there could be nothing better than being related to such a person. First, wasn't Chung Myung aiming to be the best? Wasn't that why the Tang family was ready to extend their relations with Man Hua? He is young now, but in ten years... Even my grandfather will not be able to take him down if he comes back alive. And it was rare for a young person to have so much power. Besides, wasn't the background of Mount Hua good for the Tang family as well? Now, it was a place which would make any merchant's mouth water. But from a father's point of view, will I give my daughter to him? Should I? As a human being, giving his daughter to Chong Myung wasn't an option. Unless my eyes go blind, I will never see that happen by my own volition. Tang Genok's eyes shone. His daughter had been nurtured carefully and wasn't in any father's wish for their daughter to meet a nice man and live happily ever after. Even when other sects had visited him for his daughter's hand in marriage, and even when the elders of the family nagged at him, he had protected her. But now, to Chong Myung, shit, don't even dream. No, but you brought her to me and introduced her. I did it because she asked me to. Chong Myung was puzzled. I feel like dying as I am saying this. Why would I even introduce her to you willingly? He had no intention of doing it. But now that he was angry, he even began to berate Chong Myung. And Tang Genok looked cold. You really are a good warrior. Right, but you aren't a good person. How many times in both his lives had Chong Myung heard this statement which he found so hard to refute? Uh, that, uh. No, he was a sharp man. A father doesn't want his daughter to be with a strong man, but a good man. But at the same time, my position as the lord of the Tang family prevents me from saying no. It sounds difficult. It is. Tang Genok shrugged. So, I believe that Mount Hua's divine dragon will handle this properly. So, are you ready? Sure. Then let's head into the topic. What do you want from the Tang family? Chong Myung didn't come here to avoid Tang Genok's daughter. He was here to negotiate with Tang Genok. He wiped a smile off his face and looked at Tang Genok seriously. I think I should call Sasuk. Then, we should move to a more appropriate place. But, Tang Genok smiled. But coming in here wouldn't be easy with the person outside. Hmm. Chong Myung shook his head. Huh. 
Such a funny geezer. He seemed supremely pragmatic in nature, and he clung to the concept of sacrificing things for the sake of the family name, but was still ready to play with words. Huh, he is different from Tangbo. Well, the person in charge of the Tang family couldn't be someone like Tangbo. Because of his immense talent in martial arts, Tangbo had held the position of elder in the Tang family, and it wouldn't be strange if he had been expelled from the family for not doing his role right. Well, fine. First of all, Chong Myung looked at Tang Ganok and said, Let's do it right. Do you want to form an alliance with Man Hua? It is not with Man Hua, but you. But I'm inseparable from Man Hua. I know. I know that truth very well. If I can get you, I am ready to form an alliance with Man Hua. Tang Ganok smiled. Supporting Man Hua isn't difficult. Don't forget that the Tang family has a high status. Chong Myung smiled while watching Tang Ganok. So you will support the entire Man Hua sect for just one person? It is overkill, but it is worth it. <laughs> As expected from the Lord. What does that mean? It means you are good at lying. Tang Ganok's face changed. What does that mean? Ah, oh, don't look at me with that expression. I'm not talking about the alliance that the Sichuang Tang family will form with Man Hua, but the attitude you have as if you're doing us some charity is offensive. Hmm. Tang Ganok looked at Chung Myung. You are still young, so you don't seem to see the full picture of the situation. Of course, you have excellent strength, but there are a lot of possibilities which can happen in the future. Yes, true. Of course, for Chung Myung, he knew what would happen. But Tang Ganok couldn't be sure of it. Considering that, Man Hua cannot be on equal footing with the Tang family. And even if you become the best in the world, it won't change. Sure, that is the right way to think. But you expect us to treat you as equals. For what? Chung Meng smiled. Why are you doing this, Tang family lord? Negotiations aren't made between equals. It is between those who have needs. Hmm? It isn't Man Hua that wants the Tang family. It's the Tang family which wants Man Hua. Tang Ganak frowned. What does the child know to say this? Chong Myung, who looked at him, got up, and then walked around, leaned back on the wall, and pulled down the map of Sichuan, which was hanging there. Hmm? He took the map and spread it out on the table and pointed to the Sichuan Tang family. This is the Tang family. I have eyes. And down here is the Ume sect. And on the top, there is the Qingcheng sect. If you go to the right, there is the Wudang sect. Above that is the Zhongnam sect. Ah, of course, we have the Dingchang sect too. But that is pretty far away. Having the Dingchang sect really doesn't matter. Tang Ganak looked at Chong Myung in a different light. There was no playfulness in the expressions of Chong Myung, and he had a face that said that he was being serious. Are you serious now? And Chong Myung was looking calmly at him. There is no way the Lord of the Tang family can be this lax. He didn't like how Tang Ganak displayed his conviction that his family came first. But like Tang Bo, Tang Ganak was also handling things too lightly. But once the position of Lord was handed down to him, he changed to become someone who couldn't be overtaken. And what Tang Ganak wanted was clear. The truth. If he had nothing to gain, he wouldn't have shown such favor to Chong Myung. What are you trying to say? Isn't this quite a coincidence? What is? You're blocked from all sides. The nine sects have power equal to the Tang family and some of them are greater than your family. And with the beggars all around Sichuan, Chong Myung looked at the map and said, You aren't able to breathe. Tang Ganak tried to stay calm. You seem to be misunderstanding something. Our relationship with nine sex isn't bad. Rather, you can call us associates. Yes, sure. Chong Myung shrugged his shoulders. That was until the demonic sect was defeated, though. In an instant, Tang Ganak's eyes changed. Chong Myung continued to speak. When there is a common enemy, people unite. But when the enemy disappears, 
Those who have united will have no other choice but to go their own ways according to their interests and find a new enemy, even if they had been allies they had previously fought with. You. The other great families cannot be a problem. Namgung and the Peng family, as well as the Moyong family, are in the east, and they can help each other. But what about the Tang family? In the west. Yes, and the nine sects are taking the path to lead new generations. In other words, no matter what the five great families are, in the end, the Tang family is bound to be alone, right? Tang Ganok didn't answer. It was because what Chong Myung said was accurate, and it was absurd how this child could interpret it. But Tang Ganok remained silent, and with a heavy sigh, he said, <sighs> Continue. In a way, the Tang family is under siege. Calling you the hegemony of a region is a good way to put it. But from another perspective, you have no way out of this place. Everyone will band together for Sichuan. Chong Myung pointed his fingers to the middle of the central plains. Am I wrong? It doesn't matter if you say no. It doesn't matter if you are surrounded and is under pressure from all sides. Because this isn't the situation that the Tang family would willingly bring upon itself. This is why you need a friend. A friend to keep them in check. But wait, just there. Chong Myung moved his finger. The place he pointed to was an isolated place behind the Zhongnam and Wudang sects. Mount Hua. <laughs> Quite clever, right? Why is Mount Hua there? It is shockingly nice to have Mount Hua here so that he can keep the Wudang and the Zhongnam sects in check, right? It is so strangely convenient. Tang Ganok's face went stiff at Chung Myung's calm words. How is this child able to know that? Seeing Tang Ganok go stiff, Chung Myung smiled. Eh, don't get so nervous. This isn't such a huge thing. Can I ask you one thing? Huh? When did you know all this? Um, maybe... Chung Myung shrugged. When Lord Tang came to know we had come to Sichuan, only then did Tang Ganok realize, I saw this guy in the wrong way. He wasn't a muscle brain monster. This guy was a sly snake hiding in its hole. And perhaps at this place today, the snake had caught Tang Ganok by the neck. Tang Ganok felt a chill run down his spine as he realized he was in the palm of Chongmyung all along.